Hello everyone, welcome back to Positron Round Plays Hand of Fate 2. Today I think we're going to go through the questing maze chain. Now I've heard this chain is extremely long, so I'm not entirely sure if it's going to be finished in one video, but we'll see what happens. And the way I'm going to structure this is similar to the companion quests. I don't think you really need to see me defeat 15 enemies in a single challenge, uh, for example. It's not really anything particularly different or interesting in my opinion. So I'm going to do that off camera and then I'll go to the next part and we'll see. Uh, depending on what each challenge is as we go, some of them I'll show, some of them I won't. Um, I mean, it all depends on what kind of challenge it is. However, I will start the first mission here. And I will go to the first combat with this, just so we can see what it looks like. Because I want to see if it really does look like a soup ladle. It might be just like a wimpy maze, but it definitely looks like a soup ladle from the card. I'm also in the tower here, so I can re-roll encounters. Um, to make sure I can get enough combat to be able to do it. And I do like that it, uh, also, it's gonna be ten of them right off the bat here. I do like that it lets you start with it as a supply. One of the issues I had with the Colbjorn Sword was having to actually find it first it was kind of a pain. And I've just got Mal with us since he's kind of the best, uh, the best option. I guess it's not a soup ladle, it's, the shading just looks kind of funny. Yeah, it's just a very simple maze. Wow, it's actually a little bigger than I expected there. Was she said, etc. Alright, cool. Yeah, so, uh, maybe I'll show off the special on it as well. See if it's got a particularly interesting special. Oh, that's actually really cool. Actually, it almost seems like it leaves a shockwave there. Oh my goodness. It's definitely, um, it feels slower than most two-handers, but I don't think it really is. That's a really cool attack, though. Um, obviously, we're gonna run out of time here before we can defeat all of these, but we get some of them. Yeah, so I'll just uh, see if I can get one more here. There we go. Cool. Yeah, so I will uh, make a cut here, and I'll make cuts throughout this video and show off the interesting parts, essentially. And if anything weird happens along the way, or particularly interesting, then I'll uh, I'll throw that in there as well. So for the next part of the questing maze, it looks like we need to defeat 20 corrupted. Uh, the mace itself appears to be the same. I don't know if the questing power maybe got upgraded from 200% to 300%. That might be the case. Uh, however, it does need 20 corrupted. They're not all in the same mission though. So I'm actually on the tower here, but I'll probably back out and do a different mission, but again, not a particularly engaging challenge, so see you in a moment. May come as a huge surprise to you, but this next one is another kill quest. So questing maze 3 is defeat 20 northerners to unlock this token. I've also noticed that the questing power is actually to the specific type, so last time it was corrupted, so the powerful strike did, um, I think it was like 69 damage to corrupted. Which is pretty nice. So this time it is Northerners, so again, I'm gonna go do that. It's just kill quest, so I'm gonna go fight me some Northerners and see uh, what the next one looks like. Perhaps unsurprisingly, questing maze 4 requires us to kill 20 Empire. Across any number of runs. Boy, gee, I, I wonder what the next one will be. Uh, here's questing maze five. It's um, it's thieves. Just uh, yeah. So questing maze six actually requires skeletons. That one's a little more difficult, only because there's no cards that uh, give you direct encounters with skeletons. It can happen, but there's none that specifically do that. Um, so I'm actually going to go back to the lovers challenge, where there's a fair amount of skeletons. So we're going to do it there. And uh, so I'll be back with the uh, the next unlock. This time we have to defeat a wraith. Now I believe the enemy at the end of the lovers, the boss, is a wraith. So that's where I'm going to try to do this. If it's not it, then I'll figure it out where we need to go for that. And then I'll, uh, I'll let you know that you're also looking for a wraith. But I'm pretty sure the boss at the end of the lovers quest is a guaranteed wraith. So the Lovers did work for the Wraith requirement. The final boss is a Wraith, uh, even though the card says Shade, but that's what the Wraiths are, I suppose. 
So the next one here requires three mages. I can think of two places to do this. I believe the boss at the end of Emperor is a mage. Otherwise, maybe going to tower and getting the, the huge failure on those bandit camps would also give us a mage, but uh, yeah, so I have to go kill three mages now, so that'll be interesting. So for questing mace 9, we need a necromancer. Now the best place I can think of to get a necromancer kill... I am um, actually looked at this one before recording this part, obviously. Um, is the end of the temperance challenge has a guaranteed necromancer as the boss. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go do that, and then we'll see what questing mace 10 is. I believe 10 is the last one. Theoretically, our final questing mace here uh, requires us to destroy an ogre. Uh, and that actually seems like a really easy task. There are ogres everywhere in the tower. So basically, I'm just going to go to the tower quest and just go fail one of the bandit thieves. In fact, I might as well just show this off. Uh, whoops, I actually need to equip that there. Um, yeah, let me just show you basically how I was doing, I guess, when I was getting the mages too. Um, essentially what I'm going to do here is just go into the tower, go grab an ogre really fast, and then probably just fail and get the token and we'll show off what the unlock is as well. Instead of leaving it as a huge tease. So Fate's Path is actually extremely good for uh, the tower because it just immediately shows you everything on the first floor and then you can just do a hop back and forth to get the lay of the land for the additional floors. So there's actually no Band of Thugs uh, encounter here, so we're immediately just going to draw a new card. Um, the gold here is meaningless, of course. Yep, there we go. I um, actually had Ariadne here for when I was... Well, that's As you pretty lucky, you actually. Find fame and infamy follow you. Um, I had Ariadne with me because I was using her duplicate card ability. Let's see, is there a Band of Thugs here? Yes, there is. We just have to go through... Mage's Workshop and Infamous. Infamous, we might have to do um, a challenge. We might have enough fame at this point to deal with that. Uh, Mage's Workshop, honestly, this is just kind of a throwaway. Um, let's see if they care. Uh, nope, at 8 fame, it's still good. Alright, so Band of Thugs. Yep, we just need to get an Ogre here, which is anything except the success. I'm actually going to have Ariadne duplicate one of the regular failure cards. And, um, I mean, the chances are pretty good that... There we go. Perfect. Okay, or exits the 10. Yep, there we go. Now, I don't know if you get credit for tokens if you use the forfeit option in the menu. So, I'll probably just find a way to get myself killed shortly thereafter. But, uh, yeah. And just again to show off that, you know, the questing mace is uh, still the same old thing that we had from the start. Uh, the only difference is that it, uh, whoops, it gains the powers, or it gains a, a stronger finisher against whatever you're hunting at the time. So it'll do extra damage to this ogre here. Uh, I think the worst one of these challenges was by far the mages, because there's really not a great place to get mages. Um, the easiest place is honestly here, the tower. Um, oh, he did a really quick switch there. Um, yeah, this is kind of the best place to get mages, I think, quickly. But I was having no luck getting huge failures, amusingly enough. Uh, there's mages also, I think, at the end of the Emperor. But you have to do the whole mission for that one. But yeah, so that should unlock the token. And we'll just need to find somewhere to uh, get our butts handed to us. Sure. Uh, I don't actually want the chef's charm because that will make it harder to uh, to die here. In fact, I wonder if I can just cook all of my food, even though I don't need it. Let's find out. Oh. The spirit nods sagely. You have proven yourself worthy enough to wield this powerful weapon. At long last, I may rest. I shall dream of your success, warrior. Huh. Oh. The Blood Crescent. Sanguine Blow. Perform a powerful attack that does 50 damage. Lose 50% max life when you equip this item. Just 30% less damage to corrupted and undead. 
Why is this good? <laughs> Forest spirit explodes into a shower of leaves and disappears. Huh. Now, do we actually have to equip that? Like, right now? I mean, we can do that. But I'm just curious as to the implications of this. Huh. Well, maybe we'll, we'll shuffle cards here for a bit until we get uh, another easy fame encounter here. Yeah, it's curious that it just hands it to me. What do we got here? Um, return to Rumstock, I think, would also give us more fame. Uh, the downside is we're going to have to go through Infamous there. Sure. There we go. That gave us enough fame to, to wield it. Huh. Blood Pact. Achievement unlocked. I mean, it is a 22 damage one-handed sword. That is pretty powerful. But it just seems... I guess 150 damage is a lot now that I think about it. <laughs> I think I kind of I kind of understated how much damage that actually is. Um Yeah, we'll submit trial by fire. In fact, I'm just gonna fail this. And uh Poorly done. I actually don't you think I can get nine hits on villagers without killing them. Inside you. So I don't think we're gonna get to see the power on it. Oh boy, they, they might actually kill me. I will definitely, to wrap up this video, show off the power somewhere. I'm sure we can get an encounter in some map very quickly that'll give us enough for nine hits. I get, yeah, 100, the more I think about it, 150 damage, I kind of glossed over that. That's like a lot of damage. There we go, we get the intro to the Blood Crescent as well. Mm. Kind of a cool looking sword. For a century, this weapon has been in the hands of brutal warriors, happy to give their own life to fuel it. Now it's yours. The penalty on it is pretty rough, though. Uh, I would not be surprised to see me die against these. Okay, I need Ariadne not to kill this dude. Alright, let's use the power here. Cool. Wow, yeah, that does do a lot of damage. 150 is pretty insane. Cause you gotta wonder, what are the max health pools of a lot of the enemies? So we were thinking the Peor was like super broken with like 80-ish damage, right? Well, uh, for the sake of wrapping up the... Um... How can I do this? Yeah, for the sake of wrapping up the video here, let me just cook off the rest of my food. And then, um... Just go starve, basically. Oh, I hope they're not going to give me food. I didn't even think of that. No, no, no. We just... Oh, we don't want any of this. Shoot. Yeah, I didn't think that one through. Uh, there's got to be somewhere I can, I can take damage. Oh, you know, but we could just go fight Thomas. I hate to do it to you, buddy, but I'm gonna need you to, to end me here. Palace Armory. Nope. All right. I deserve every bit of this, Thomas. Just just do it to me, pal. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> nice and easy. Alright, cool. So this should unlock, I'm assuming this unlocks the Blood Crescent permanently. As an item we can use. Take the battle to them next time. My real curiosity here is it's not 
a supply, is it? Oh, we actually get two cards here. The Blood Crescent and the... Oh, we get the Questing Mace itself. Okay, that's actually really cool. Now, does it continue to be a supply? Um... Yeah. 275% damage against anything. That's actually really, really good. That's actually a fantastic weapon to start with. Yeah, that's actually really cool. Um, and then I assume, whoops. I assume the other, the Blood Crescent is just equipment. And it's interesting too, because it's, I mean, obviously it's got the, the huge penalty on max life, but because it's a brimstone weapon, we can pretty much take it anywhere. There are a couple of those restrictions, but um, yeah, it's, it's super duper powerful. So that's cool. So that is the end of the questing mace line. I hope this video has been helpful, if nothing else, and uh, <laughs> entertained. Probably hear my decline in patience as I go through this quest, because boy, this this was recorded over the course of like three days, I think, because uh, it was just super time consuming. Um, it's cool, though. The reward is definitely really cool. But yeah, so thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you click like, helps a bunch. Subscribe for more, and I will see you soon.